need to eat that cheese, yo. <laughs> no, that shot's unusable. <laughs>Hi there, I'm Beth and today I'm going to show you how I learned to knit a Midi Blythe sized jumper. Let's go. Okay, so here's my first example. This was the first jumper I knitted using this method that I'll be showing you. I always get the urge to do some knitting in the lead up to Christmas for some reason and I went looking on Pinterest as I do and I found a couple of tutorials, a couple of links that really helped me get my head around how these proper top-down sweaters are made. So I'll give you some homework, the links will be in the description. Um, the first one that I looked up was how to knit in the round with DPNs on the website Nimble Needles and it just really helped with the juggling of all the different needles and also importantly how to do an in like an invisible join so when you have cast on stitches in the straight and you then disperse them onto a number of needles and you create a join. So definitely check out that link to learn how to do that. And the second one is the one hour sweater. That caught my eye uh, on the website The Roving Crafters and basically I followed their pattern, their tutorial, once I'd done a little practice using DPNs um, and they showed some other interesting techniques like how to move stitches onto waste yarn in order to come back and pick them up and continue the sleeves because that had always eluded me. I never could figure out how people were able to knit in all these different directions at once but now I know <laughs> the secret is out. So as you can see I have my little notebook. I followed the tutorial and made this one first. I was delighted. It's not going to fit on uh, a midi body um, unless you took off the head first. This was uh, intended to be a Christmas decoration or just a, a practice sweater but really did help so I do recommend following their tutorial as they do it first. So I then went on and made more. I made notes, I tried out different combinations of stitches, increases, different lengths of sleeve and I made notes and notes and basically you won't be able to read these but I've made lots of different sort of shapes and sizes of sweaters all based on that first one. Some didn't work out, some did and I've moved on to combining knitted jumper tops with skirts now as well which I'm really happy with. So I'll show you what I what I've been making. Um, so after the first jumper I've tried them out with knitting in the flat um, and adding buttons. These are Marna's 3D printed buttons that I was able to use straight away. Watching some of uh, Lorraine at Serenata's advent videos. She was showing some lovely knitted clothes every day and I saw her using a sort of half and half where it started knitting in the flat but then you join the stitches together and I really loved how her closure at the back had like a, an overlap so I managed to figure out how to do that as well. Delighted. Um, so yeah I've made so many little jumpers trying out different types of yarn. A wonderful stash buster if you've got lots of random balls of yarn hanging around in drawers. I started using some thinner yarn. This is a lighter weight um, which was, I was really happy with. I've made some with matching hats. So this is like a little cute mushroom design. Again, Marna's little buttons there is a finishing touch. Tried out different lengths of collar and decreasing before the cuffs to get like a slightly shaped cuff. 
Um, I haven't finished this yet, it might look scary. Uh, it's going to be like a little frog outfit for Midi as well, super cute. I've made a little wintry one here with a combination knitted and crocheted and pom-pom on top. Here I've used some duplicate stitch. Um, I did show how to do the duplicate stitch on a Christmas knitted jumper video. I'll, uh, I'll add that into the links as well. And I did of course make some bigger ones for Blythe. So you might have seen this one in the Christmas doll room video and that was with again quite a light yarn. It was a little tricky but I managed to get there. Some knobbly yarn, some really interesting textures, longer cuffs that you can just then fold back on themselves. I quite like that. And these are, you know, quite wide. The rib stitch is real stretchy, so you can see that you'll be able to slide that up the body because you're not getting anything over that big blithe head. And again, really stretchy on the top. The, the lower hem can be a little narrower and that's where I cast off. Mine tend to be less stretchy um, at the bottom, but very stretchy at the top. So there we go. I think that's all my examples. Oh, no, tell a lie. I've got the ones that I've been making just this weekend. Um, so I've got this one. I really like, I don't know why, I really like the long sleeves. Look at me, I've got long sleeves myself today, but I really like the look of extra long sleeves on Blythe, maybe with little crinkles if they're fabric, just love it. Looks like a child wearing clothes that are too big for them, I just love it. This skirt is sewn directly onto the hem of the jumper and I've sewn through both layers here with the buttons to hold the, the flap over, so it's a, an off-the-shoulder dress. I really like that and I put together a little midi version just yesterday, again with the exaggerated long sleeves. Just love it, so cute, and I think that's quite a nice look. Now then, materials-wise, obviously you'll need your yarn. The example that I'll make today is going to have a contrasting colour for the collar and cuffs and hem, and another colour for the main body. You'll need the needles themselves, these are the DPNs, so they have no sort of stopper at the end. These ones are three millimeters wide. In case you want to count stitches, um, a stitch counter can be very handy. I personally don't, I always get distracted. I'm usually knitting in the living room, so the method that I'm going to show you doesn't involve much counting, really. It relies on just following one or two simple rules for increases, round stitches, and just counting how many stitches you've got, and even if you have to stop and put it down and pick it up again later, you shouldn't get too lost. I don't really count how many rows I'm doing, but you could, of course. I've got stitch markers here. The kind that I really like using are just smooth rings. No breaks in them, you just slide them on and off the needles as you're going. I've got two yarn needles here. One is pointed and one is rounded. You would ideally want one of each. I have some waist yarn, which is to slip the sleeve stitches onto, uh, something decent quality so that you're not poking poking needles through this yarn. You want to keep that whole and a pair of scissors. And I think that's about it. Here I've made my notes. Um, hopefully you can see. Feel free to take screenshots or just come back and pause as we look at these. But we're going to start off with the casting on. I'll be using what I believe is called the long tail cast on. So I'm going to use this green yarn for my cuffs and going to estimate how long, let's say 50 centimetres for my first attempt and I do a slip knot on the needle. I have the shorter end to the front of my hand. I'm going to hold that with my thumb and last two fingers and I'm holding the working yarn attached to the ball in the back with my first and middle fingers and what I do is wrap the yarn around the thumb catch it with the tip of the needle and then the working yarn comes from the like the bottom to the top of the needle and you catch a loop to pull through the thumb loop 
let go with the thumb and slide it through. I apologize if that isn't very, very clear a description. It's a hard kind of thing to describe, but I'll show you a few more examples. find my yarn unravels itself slightly so I let go and let it recurl regularly and it gives you nice stitches I'm going to need 21 stitches to cast on I'll be using one to join in the round so I'll end up with 20 stitches Twenty-one should be. Okay, so we have twenty-one stitches. Next I'm going to redistribute the stitches. Now the tutorial that I followed has you working on multiple needles, um, but the next tutorial I read showed how to knit in the round using just two needles, which I did prefer. So I tend to join my knitting into the round using multiple needles, using three, but then I prefer to move it back to two needles and just work with two and a, and a third for knitting in. So I've got about 10 stitches there. They're not so loose that the needle drops out. Put a few stitches on here. Now I'm keeping it so that my stitches, I can see a continuous line of the, the cast on stitches. They're all facing inward there so I know I'm not twisting my stitches. Make sure my yarn ends, my loose ends are on the right side. So my working yarn on the right hand side. I'm going to move what was the first stitch I cast on onto my right needle. Then I'm going to slip what was the last stitch I cast on over that and drop it off the end. This is where we lose that extra, there we go, this is where we lose that extra stitch. So we've dropped that off, so all together I should be left with 20 stitches. Yes, so we've lost one stitch, but we've got a nice join in the round. So next I will slip my stitches around to end up with 10 stitches on each needle. So I'll just carefully slide them. And, as it mentions in that tutorial, I'm going to slip this stitch, that we, the one that we moved from the left needle onto the right, I'm going to move that stitch back onto the left. Again, if my example isn't very clear, do check out those resources, I find them very useful. So now we have 10 stitches on each needle and now that I've moved that stitch back, my tail and my working yarn are in between. They're at the end in between these needles. So now I can start knitting with a third needle. To knit the collar, I'm going to be knit to purl toing <laughs> to make a ribbed collar. Again, I've not specified how many rounds to do this for, just as long as you want your collar. Maybe just three or four rounds if you want a fairly short collar, but if you want like a turtleneck that you fold over, just make it as, as long as you, you deem it. So for knitting, I'm not going to, to go over all the, all the basic stitches, but I hold the, the tail out of the way, hook the yarn around my finger, and I'm only knitting into this front needle. So the back one, I'm holding it parallel, with my fingers but I'm not actually knitting into it so I bring my working yarn up 
and over. Now I'm going to knit two. Then I'm going to bring the yarn over to the front and I'm going to purl two. Move it to the back. As I move into this row of stitching, as I move along, it sort of becomes more of a triangle shape. So I will knit two. Bring the yarn forward and purl two. Yarn back. Knit two. There. So the next two that I do will be purl two. I flip the needles over. So now my yarn again should be sort of in between or below the two needles at the end. And again, I'm going to hold on to both. We ended with two knit, so we're going to start with two purl. I usually flip my needle round backwards and bring the yarn to the front. Purl two. Yarn to the back. And knit two. Sometimes I like to move this needle behind the other. It's just a more comfortable angle to work at, but it's not changing anything that's happening in the business end. Yarn to the back. Knit two. Yarn to the front. Purl two. So that's the first round done. As you can see, I've still got my working yarn on the right and I'm holding it so my stitches that I have knit so far, they are pointed downward, down to the ground, so away from away from camera. And I repeat, I do that again. I always make sure the first couple of stitches on a new needle are fairly tight and I hold the needle quite close together so you don't end up with like a big ladder effect. If you're leaving too much space, you might get sort of ladder. Um, but I will continue on knitting two, purling two, knitting two, purling two, until I have my collar built up a little. Okay, I have continued a few more rows and I've got my collar the size that I would like it. Uh, I don't know how many rows that was, maybe maybe six or seven rows for this, so we'll see how it looks. And now I'm going to change colour and knit one round in the new colour. So I'm going to use this hot pink. I'm thinking it might look a little bit like a strawberry when it's all finished. <laughs> With this green and pink. Now another thing I learned, I will, um, I'll see if I can find the video that I watched originally that really helped. Changing colour when you're sort of, when you've still got a working yarn. I'll show you how I do it and I will include a link. Okay, so the new yarn comes through between the two needles gets held off on the left. The working yarn of the previous colour crosses over on top of that, gets held to the left. Then I grab the tail of the new yarn, it comes up and goes clockwise around this needle. The yarn I'm holding in my left hand comes round the other way and then the tail comes round and pulls a stitch and it goes again in between these. Now I hold this yarn off to the back, I take the working end of the previous yarn and I hold that off to the back and then because I'm holding my yarn in my right hand as I knit, I actually pull this off to the right, wrap it around my finger 
and I'm going to pull this new, this loop of the new colour around onto the front, carefully holding everything. Takes a bit of practice and then I'm able to start knitting. Now I've got my new yarn colour, get that locked into place with a few stitches and yeah you can see it's a nice clean join into a new colour and I can cut, can cut off the old yarn and when I'm ready I can tie a knot and move these to the inside, just tuck them in so they're out of the way and later I will sew the ends in neatly. Hopefully that was clear enough, at least you can follow the link in the description and I like to do a few practices of a new technique just on its own before I have a go at it in a new project. So I'm just going to do one full round in this new colour. Flip it round. So for the moment, remember I'm not uh, an experienced knitter, so I don't know if this is the best way or not, but I like to just do a little knot and then tuck these in here. Hopefully my uh, muddling through will help somebody who's at the same stage as me to, uh, to learn how to knit a little jumper too. Okay, so my tails are tucked to the inside. Now I'm going to, if you haven't already, if you've been following the knitting tutorial that I've linked, you might have yours on three needles up to this point. So if you haven't, now move on to two needles, just redistribute your stitches and two needles and we're going to add the markers. So I've got my little round markers. I'll show you on my diagram again. This is just the way it makes sense to me and it's definitely not the way I've ever seen anyone else make their notes about knitting. But essentially here are the two needles parallel to each other like this with the working yarn on the right hand side and we're going to place these markers so that there are two stitches and then a marker six stitches and then a marker and two stitches and the same for the needle in front. Now the way that I have been jotting this down in my notebook is a little diagram like this. So this is essentially two and two equals four and that is how many sleeve stitches I have at the moment. So we've got four and four for the sleeves on each side and this is the front and back of the sweater. So that's what this diagram is supposed to mean. So we've got, hello, an empty noodle, an empty noodle. So we've got an empty needle, I'm going to move two stitches onto that needle and then slip on a marker. Six more stitches on and slip on a marker and the last two. Flip it round and repeat that for the back. So hopefully you can see how that resembles my little diagram. <laughs> so these are the, the front and the back and at either side we have the sleeves which are split across the two needles. So next I'm going to knit with increases using KFB which is knit front and back in the stitches before and after the markers. So I'm going to do a round so on each needle I'm going to knit and then I'm going to knit the front and the back which will increase our stitch count by one. I will pass the marker onto the needle that I'm knitting onto and then for the first stitch after the marker I'll do knit front and back. Then I'm just going to knit, 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 do another increase, 
move the marker, do another increase and knit and then flip it round and repeat. So I'll show you what a knit front and back increase looks like. So I've got the working yarn on the right. So I'm going to knit one regular stitch and then and I'm going to try and try and keep everything loose. Things got difficult for me when I was using the thinner yarn and my tension was still a little tight and with the increases I found it really difficult to get the needle into but I really just had to loosen up and get more comfortable with it. So I'm going to yarn round and pull up a stitch as normal but then I'm going to hold the needles apart. I'm going to actually move the tip of my right needle to the back and I'm going to go through the loop again there and I'm going to yarn round once more and pull up a second loop. So in that one loop I've now created two. Slip that off as usual and now I'm going to just pass the stitch marker from one needle to the next and I'll do another increase in this one. So I'm pulling it, I'm taking the working yarn around the back so it's kind of just passing over the back of the stitch marker. If you haven't worked with them before it can be a little confusing to work out where they need to sit. So for this the stitch marker is kind of pushed towards the front. So I'm going to go round, pull up a stitch, take the needles apart and pass to the back and I'm going to hook into the back of that stitch, yarn round again and pull up a second loop and slide that off. So now you can see we have extra stitches. So all I need to remember, I don't really need to count stitches, I just need to remember that I'm increasing before and after the markers. In a house with many distractions that can be a lifesaver. That's the increase is done. Again I turn the work around and I just repeat that. I always make sure my yarn is sort of down in between the two needles before I start so I don't accidentally wrap it around the wrong way and create an extra stitch somewhere. And that's one full round with increases. Okay so now I have, according to this diagram, now I have eight in the front, eight in the back and six for each sleeve. So this will increase, each section will increase by two with every round that has increases. So we've done that. Now I'm going to do one round just knitting. So just one stitch in each previous stitch, no increases until we're back to the start and then repeat again with the increases. So we'll do one round plain, then one round again. So that will end up being, that'll be six. So then it'll become eight in the sleeves and 10 in the front and 10 in the back. And again, and we just keep repeating until we end up with 10 stitches for each sleeve. So that's five and five. And we end up with 12 stitches between the markers, front and back. Okay, so we'll go until that point. And we just pass the markers from one needle to the next so they stay in the same position. And there we go. Turn it over and we're ready to do our next round with increases. So again, knit the normal stitches, but the stitches before and after the marker 
get that knit front and back. So I'll come back when I've finished the round that increases the stitches to 10, 12, 12 and 10. Okay, I've just completed those increases. Next, we're going to be separating the sleeves from the needles um, and putting them on waste yarn to come back to later. I've just made an extra note, so if you did a screenshot earlier, just uh, take a fresh one now with knitting five stitches and then slipping them onto the waste yarn and removing the marker. So I'll show you that next. You can see the shape of the jumper starting to develop. Your increases mean it's spreading out in this direction. So I'm going to, I've got five stitches on this needle before the marker. And I'm just going to knit those five stitches. Okay, so this moves our working yarn. I'm just going to bring that working yarn to the for to the front here. I can remove this stitch marker and I'm going to grab the blunt yarn needle and one of my scrap pieces of yarn. And then I'm just going to pass this needle that's got the five stitches on it, I'm just going to slip those stitches onto my darning needle and onto the waste yarn. So I can put the needle down. If you wanted, if you were worried, I guess you could tie a little slip knot into the end of that, but you can see the stitches are being held there. So without pulling too tightly, I'm going to put my blank needle into the first stitch of this row on the body. So I'm just holding the waste yarn out of the way. And I'm going to knit along to the next stitch marker. Okay, so Again, just drop my working yarn. Now I can remove my stitch marker and I'm going to grab the next piece of scrap yarn and my blunt needle again. I'm going to thread that. And again, I've got five stitches on the needle, so I'm just going to slip them off. And I'm also going to, I'm sort of flipping the work around. So we're looking at the, what was the back needle. And now I'm going to slip the next five stitches. So the rest of this sleeve. So they're all facing in the same direction on the yarn. We've now got all of those stitches being held on the waste yarn. I can remove this stitch marker, pop that down, and now you can see we've just got one last little section we'll get to of sleeve stitches. Find the working yarn, so that's on the other needle, so we don't want a big, a big ladder, so I'm going to hold Moving the waste yarn down out of the way, I'm going to hold these two needles parallel again. We don't want a ladder in the side, so I'm going to hold that working yarn nice and close. And in the front needle, I'm going to join the, essentially under the armpit, I'm going to join the two needles with a regular knit stitch, holding it close. And for the first few stitches, again, holding it quite close and keeping those stitches nice and tight so we don't end up with loose, laddery looking stitches under the arms. And I'm going to knit up to the final stitch marker. 
and slip off those remaining sleeve stitches. should be all 10 stitches held on the waist yarn. And once more, let's bring these needles together, move the waist yarn ends out of the way, and holding them close to each other, we bring the yarn round and do some close stitches to form the underarm. And I'm knitting all the way to the end. And that completes your body, front and back. It joins them. And now again, I'm not going to tell you how many rounds to do. Grab yourself a midi body and hold it up against to determine how long you want it. You might want to make a sweater dress and you might just want to keep it going quite long. But I'm going to knit round until I am ready to change colour and knit the lower hem. So we did that, slip five stitches onto the yarn. Yes, so we're here now. Knit round and round for the body. So just however many rounds you're doing. And then when I'm ready to change colour, I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. I have knitted just a few more rounds, keeping the body fairly short. I have my little mannequin body here. So now I'm going to change colour again. So what I'm going to do here, change colour and knit one round of the new colour. I do this because if I jump straight into doing knit two, purl two, you end up with kind of little funny spots of colour where you've changed colour. If you're not changing colour, you could just jump into knit two, purl two for your ribbed hem. But if you're changing colour and don't want those funny little loops of the different colour poking through, then do as, as I'm showing here and just do one round of normal knit stitches before you go into the ribbing. So here's my new working yarn, keep that out of the way. Here's my previous, so I'll snip the pink to the same length. I'm going to do essentially what I was doing right at the start. So you see they're not yet joined together with the new yarn. So hold them nice and close. And because I've made sure that all of my patterns, whenever I want to end with a knit two, purl two ribbing, I make sure that my stitches are in multiples of four so that 
they end up neatly, you know, so you don't end up with uh, like two knit stitches and then you want to start the next round with two knit stitches. It's got to end in two purls so that you can start with two knit stitches. So remember your maths. So I'm knitting two, bring the yarn to the front, purl two, I'm simply going to continue that for two more rounds. So we've got one round of plain. I'm just going to do two rounds of rib stitch and then I'm going to cast off. So I've done my two rows of rib stitch. So to cast off, my working yarn and I'm just going to knit two stitches and with my left needle I'm going to grab that first stitch and loop it up and over and off so only the second stitch remains on my right hand needle. Now I knit another stitch and again I take the stitch towards the back, loop it round and off. And I continue that until the end of the row. And now I knit the last stitch from, oops, <laughs> from this needle. Loop this one over. So now I've just got one stitch on what was the right needle. So what I'm going to do is turn the work over like this and I'm going to bring my needle round to the front and carry on as before. So I'll knit that first stitch and pull the loop over. Okay, and just continue on. Okay, now that's the way I've always cast off. Please let me know if there's a better way to be doing it in the round. Again, I'm not <laughs> very experienced with knitting, so I don't know any better. So I'm gonna cut a reasonable length of tail and I like to Pull a little loop from the needle, grab the tail through it and just pull so that's not going to come undone. So I can see I have like a slight jog so what I like to do is with the sharp needle this time, a darning needle with a point, I will thread the tail I've just cut and I like to go through you can see there's like a bit of a, a dip there where it joins. So I like to go through to the inside, which pulls those closed quite nicely. And then flipping it round to the inside, I'll do a little knot, just catching the inside. And again, there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, I like to, if it's in the ribbing at the bottom, I'll tend to go through, like just catching, I'm um, sort of splitting the yarn, if you like. I'm going to go through a few loops, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's not too tight, and I'll go back. Maybe go back a couple and then back up again. Just catching the inside of that yarn, not pulling anything overly tight and I'll snip close so that leaves a nice neat ending to our body. We've still got our sleeves to be completed but I like to turn it inside out at this point and deal with these loose ends. 
now. Here is where I changed yarn colour from one to the other and I just like to, same again, use the sharp yarn needle. I'll take one, one colour in one direction and I'll tend to go sort of diagonally through a couple of loops at a time, making sure none of it is going to show on the outside and I'll flip it over I'll do the same for the, the other colour. Oh, hello. So I'm going to repeat that with this knot and again for where I cast on the neck initially I'm just going to sew it down up and down again and then cut it neatly. I'll be right back. Okay that's all my loose ends woven in. I can turn my jumper back around the right way. So you can see it's really looking good already. So we've done that. Uh, now I'm going to slip the sleeve stitches onto two needles. Again, if you prefer to work with three needles, that's fine, but I, I find it easier to just work with two. So imagining the waste yarn is a needle, I'm just going to slip the stitches off of it and five there. Before I pull out the waste yarn, I'll make sure all the stitches are secured. Okay, now I always do mine so that they're kind of front and back half. So you can see there will be where I'm going to join the yarn is going to be at the lower, the lowest point of the, the armpit and I'm going to be working in rounds like this. So should be able to slip out my waste yarn now. There we go. And I have got my setup ready for the sleeve. Now we're going to attach new yarn but not in the same method as before because we don't have an existing yarn to wrap it round to attach to. So what I'll do with both needles parallel and just working into the front one. Put my needle through as if I'm going to start a knit stitch and what I'll do is leave again a longish tail and I'm going to just make a loop and pull that loop over so you see it's going over the empty needle that I've just inserted. It's going over and it's going down in between these. I'm going to pull that loop through to the front, slide it off, that's my first stitch, and I put the needle back in for the next stitch. At this point I like to just take the tail end, hold it round to the back and keep it out of the way. Now I'll wrap my finger around like a normal stitch. Okay, there we go. So keep the needles oriented the correct way. So now I can turn over. I will knit the other needle. I'm going to turn the work around, get my working yarn down in the middle making sure I don't pull too tightly on the tail. I can then start what is the second round. Slip the stitches onto two needles, we've done that, joined our new yarn and I've just got knit round and round. Again, I don't like to count my rounds. I'm lazy, I get distracted and I might change my mind about how long I want the sleeves to be. So I'm just going to knit 
back and forth over the new the needles the noodles and I'm gonna make the sleeves as long as I want them I might just stick with a, a normal uh, sleeve length for this example today so I'm going to hold them up I know how thick my cuff is going to be because I can see how thick it was on the body so I'm going to knit until my sleeve is about that long Now with the tail, where we've cast on, I've just sort of ignored it, it's currently sticking out of the body and you will find that there is a hole in the armpit. That seems to be quite normal. I have done some fiddling around with swapping stitches over as I cast on, but for the moment you can just push that inside the body. So it's out of the way. Okay, so it's gone in that big hole and we're going to use that to sew up the armpit when we're finished. So we're going to turn it inside out and stitch up the armpit. So don't worry about that big hole and I will continue knitting. Okay, I've knitted a few rounds. You can see the hole in the underarm. Now I'm ready to change back over to this green yarn. I'm going to change them and knit one round in normal knit and again knit um, rib stitch for two rounds. Now for the arm which is a total of 10 stitches it's not a multiple of four so I can't do K2, P2 so I'm going to knit one, purl one for the rib stitching and then I'm going to cast off exactly the same as we did for the hem and essentially repeat that then for the other sleeve. Okay, that's the first needle knitted. So my little knot and I'm going to tuck these loose threads down inside. There we go, so they're inside the sleeve now out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to join the two halves again and I'm going to knit one, purl one. And there we go, back round to the front. And now I'm going to cast off, same way as before, knit two stitches and bring the back loop over and off. There we go, that's the last one. Keep that on the needle until I've cut my yarn, leave enough to weave in with. And again I will switch to my pointy yarn needle. Turn it all inside out and I'll show you how to weave in these ends.
Be careful not to put it through the hole in the armpit. Here's the piece of yarn from the cast off we've just done. So I'll start with that. So it's already pulled to the inside. I'm just going to catch the underside of a stitch and I'm going to tie it in a little knot. I'm just going to neatly secure the yarn. So that's the cuff all woven in. Now for this armpit hole, let's get a finger on the inside there so I can see what I'm working with. So for me, with the sleeve to the right, the body to the left, the yarn is here closest to me at the sort of top side of the hole. Now I'm not sure if this is the best way, this is just the way that I've been doing. I'll do a kind of ladder stitch where starting from here I'll pick up this stitch here and then I'll come back over here and I'll pick up stitch there okay and I'll cross back over here pick up this stitch here okay so we're sort of zigzagging and I'll pick up another stitch here and then when I pull them tight, it should zip up that hole. Make sure that we tie this off. And then I'm going to hide these, hide this tail. I'm going to go in a diagonal towards the hem not pulling too tightly, flip it over and then I like to go back in that direction just a few stitches. And I will turn this back the right way round. And we're going to repeat exactly the same again for the second sleeve. I'm going to pick up the stitches onto two needles, join in the new yarn, knit round and round. And what I like to do is essentially just fold the jumper in half periodically. I will show you, um, but I just visually match up. And I would say none of my sleeves so far have come out looking any longer than the other. You know, they all seem to be matched up close enough but again follow the tutorials that I've linked. Um, the jumper tutorial does tell you how many rounds to do so if you want to try that that number of stitches for the body and for the arm and see how that works out for you but using my wider collar so it will fit on a Blythe feel free to try that. Um, I am going to go and get some lunch and I will be back with some progress on the sleeve. Okay, I have attached and have been knitting my second sleeve and as you can see the length looks about the same as the first sleeve. So I just like to fold it in half and compare. I'll line up the collar and get an idea. So it looks like to me the same length there. So I'm going to change colour 
back to the green yarn and do my cuff the same way that I did previously. There we go. And of course you can sew on buttons. You could sew on lace. You could do what I've done this last weekend and uh, sew on a skirt directly onto the, the jumper. How's that? Okay, and as I say, I've done a fairly long collar. It's kind of halfway between a polo neck and just a normal collar. You can see the hands. I didn't make the sleeves too long. I like the collar up. And I might use duplicate stitch. Another thing you can look up and learn how to do, which is a sort of hand stitching on details after the fact in a way that mimics the knitted stitches. I will link a video where I show this up in the corner there and I'll show you some nice finished pictures. I'll put this on a on a doll with a head and uh, that's about it for me. I like I say I hope that has been useful for someone. I do hope you'll share and let me know if you give it a try yourself. The measurements can be scaled up for regular neo-sized Blythe. Just go nuts, do some, do some tests, make some notes and have some fun with it. I will see you again in next week's video and I hope you'll leave me a nice comment and a like if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again. All right, bye bye.